The Council for Scientific and Industrial Research has developed breath analyzer technology to monitor sugar levels in diabetes patients. In South Africa, over 3 million people between the ages of 21 to 79 have diabetes. Currently, most patients who are diagnosed with diabetes have to prick their fingers three times a day to check their sugar levels. This method of monitoring and detecting diabetes is painful for the patient and could potentially introduce infections. The breath analyzer technology aims to supplement and eventually replace the current invasive glucometer for monitoring diabetes in both young and old patients with a completely pain-free solution through a breath analyzer based on nanowire sensors. The breath analyzer technology was among some of the technology displayed at the media briefing held in Pretoria on Wednesday. A few selected female researchers from the CSIR briefed the media on some of the health research being undertaken to improve the country's health care system. At the media briefing, one of the researchers working on this technology, Valentine Sasa, spoke about the invention. Our invention is a breath analyzer nanotechnology which is supposed to detect blood glucose in people who are diabetic, who have diabetes mellitus. So currently um, people who are diabetes, they use uh, needles and they prick themselves and use strips to detect the blood glucose in their system. So our current device only uses breath to detect uh, acetone le- blood glucose level in the body. Sasa says finger pricking remains one of the most painful methods of monitoring diseases. Because the, we saw that the current uh, device or the current monitoring device is quite painful because you have to at least check your blood glucose three times a day. So it, when you continuously prick yourself, you can have finger swell and then you can have like. Um, other infectious diseases and it's quite uh, costly for with the current one because you have to buy the strips twice a month so in a year you spend about 4.8 excluding the device on itself. The CSR is also working on the safety and development of skin care products. Communities across the world rely on cosmetics for beauty and to protect their skin. South Africa is facing a crisis with illegal products that are damaging the skin of consumers. Product development technician VV Pasha urged consumers to be aware of the ingredients that go into cosmetic products to ensure the safety and protection of their skin. Pasha says certain ingredients found in skin lightening products are banned in South Africa. Mm, I said that certain ingredients that uh, that form part of skin lightening skin lightening creams are banned in South Africa. Why? Because because of their activity in the skin. They penetrate the skin and in a long term use they cause damage because they they now work on the on the stratum corneum which is the barrier of the skin. Uh, this, it, they then disturb the barrier functioning of the skin itself and then you will have things like UV penetrating the, the stratum corneum hence forming certain damages to the skin and those, those are irreversible as well. So then um, whenever we purchase products we need to, to have a little bit of knowledge about the, the ingredients that go into this product which is then um, crucial for every consumer to know what goes into their product before you purchase them. Senior researcher in synthetic biology, Dr. Janine Scottfield, presented her research on stem cells. Scottfield is making genetically engineered liver cells with the aim of designing drugs suited to the African population to avoid adverse drug reactions, which are becoming an increasing issue across the continent. The stem cells that we make, we can turn into liver cells. And liver cells are really, really important because they metabolize the drugs that we take. But the problem is is that the drugs that come to sub-Saharan Africa have been developed largely in Europe and the US. Um, And we have an incredibly diverse population here. So people don't metabolize the drugs very well. And that leads to severe adverse drug reactions. So what we're doing is taking the stem cells that we're turning into liver and genetically engineering them to incorporate African variants or African mutations so that we can better understand how these drugs are causing toxicity 
um, and then try and better um, use that information to redesign the drugs so that they avoid that toxicity. Senior researcher Ganeshri Monsami also shared her research on the development of probiotics for use in the production of boiler chickens, a dusky cob and abalone. The research will also assist the country in the production of natural animal products free of antibiotics, chemicals and growth stimulants. Monsami says South Africa is focused on affordable food production. So probiotics, if you include it in broiler production actually helps you address these challenges in that for a farmer or a farm that produces chickens, their most expensive cost is actually the feed. But because the stress that the chickens are under in the broiler house, they aren't able to use this feed properly. So therefore, probiotics helps the host digest its food better. So then you get a higher average daily gain. So it grows better faster without chemical intervention or without almost a, a booster shot. Lebo Changela, SABC News, Pretoria.